The following is a presentation of TFNN. Now, TFNN opens the door to the future. Larry Pesavento, systems analyst, is your tour guide into the market futures. Want to see into the future? Well, climb aboard Larry's time machine and come with us. Larry takes your phone calls now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. This is the Futures Hour. Here's your host, Larry Pesavento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. Uh, we will have Rich Anderson from Anderson Capital Management on at the uh, half hour to talk to us about the grains. Uh, I think it will be very informative. Uh, if you remember uh, last year around um, March and April, you know, Rich uh, began talking about the possibility of a big drought occurring from you know the levels that they were seeing in uh, uh, subsoil moisture levels, and that turned out to be a really big move, and we are setting up for potential for another uh, type of move, and we have a very bullish situation in the grains where the nearby grains are selling at a much higher price than the new crop that haven't been planted yet, so that means there's good demand. But the main thing to focus on um, these next few days, uh, Thursday and Friday, uh, I posted the chart in for the XAU, uh, the gold and silver index. We talked about that. Uh, yesterday, um, those markets moved anywhere from 3 to 5%. Some of the smaller gold stocks and silver stocks moved even more. Uh, I wasn't aware of this until one of the subscribers uh, actually called me to tell me that, uh, you know, they had huge moves in some of these uh, smaller stocks that I that I don't follow. But the major indexes, the gold and silver index, uh, you know, did move well. Um, the uh, bull bear uh, index for gold uh, moved, uh, you know, quite a bit. It moved, I believe, 5% in one day. But they hit all the numbers. I mean, they hit those 618 numbers on all those major things, gold, silver, uh, all, you know, the XAU, the, the bull bear index and silver, all of them have hit the perfect 61% uh, retracements and have rallied a little bit. That doesn't mean they're going to rally, uh, you know, forever from here because if they break down below to this week's low, that is going to be a very, very negative connotation uh, under any circumstance. Uh, so we'll have to, you know, just give it, uh, you know, one day at a time to see how it works. But so far they've held up, uh, you know, extremely well. Uh, the next chart that I'm going to post into uh, the Tiger TV is the uh, Silver Daily, and it'll show that, you know, it hit the exact 50%, you know, in October. It hit the exact 61% in December, and now it's hit the exact uh, 786 in March. And we've had a three-drive pattern coming down to it. So if this market was ever poised uh, for a rally, this is it. Uh, but the, the, the problem is if it doesn't rally, it goes the other way, and that's D-O-W-N, down. So you've got to, you know, get out of silver if it goes below 27.90. That's uh, the way I look at the same thing in silver. Uh, the gold would be uh, around 15.50 uh, 50, uh, per ounce, you know, in the gold market. Um, I also um, I wanted to post into Tiger TV the, uh, the SLV, which is the ETF for silver. It's one of the better... ETFs along with GLD, and it also um, mimics silver perfectly. And as you can see, it also hit the the 61786 retrace. But what's interesting about this, though, is that the uh, the ETF for silver made the low uh, two weeks before the silver did. In other words, the the ETF has made higher bottoms now, and uh, silver uh, made the bottom just the other day. So that's a that's a really unusual situation that the that the ETF for silver actually, you know, bottomed, uh, you know, bottomed earlier. You know, we've been watching for higher bottoms in the gold, you know, all along, and that's that's been uh, fulfilling uh, pretty much like we uh, had expected. But uh, this was a surprise to me because I don't follow the ETFs that often. Uh, that that is the understatement of the year. But uh, you know, in this particular instance, it did, you know, bottom long before, uh, you know, the regular uh, the regular silver. The, the regular silver market that bottomed, and that's, uh, I think, an important uh, important fact to, to look at. Now, um, we, we have something that also, something else that is happening uh, as we speak, and, that, and I have to bring this to your attention because uh, it's in the Japanese yen, and I, I want to show you, you know, where we are because we are, um, 
very, very close. Uh, I have to get the weekly chart up here. Just give me a second here. And uh, you'll see that we are um, very, very close now. We're only uh, uh, just less than 100 pips away now from the Japanese yen making a really major uh, point uh, on the charts. That's the 786 retracement from the 2009 high. Uh, and, you know, we've been basically straight up since 75. And uh, so we are coming into this really strong resistance at this 95.80 level in the um, in the Japanese yen, and this is all related to commodities because you know it's, it's the money that's moving the markets. And we, since we're talking about this, we should look at the dollar index because at the same time, you know, we're fulfilling this pattern that uh, we were uh, talking about uh, yesterday on the show uh, at around the 82.75 uh, uh, to 83 level. We got to 82.50, and uh, we've re we've reversed a little bit today, which you know that's still very 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 early. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to change, but we've almost made the ABCD patterns uh, in this uh, in this market. So uh, that would complete a uh, beautiful head and shoulders pattern uh, and very symmetrical one. Uh, in fact, it's uh, one that looks uh, you know very very um, symmetrical. So I am uh, watching for you know the U.S. dollar here to start to weaken. I'm watching for the Japanese yen here uh, to start start to weaken uh, relatively soon. And so those are the things that I have on the, the currency front, you know, to, to look at for, uh, you know, uh, trades that are coming up. We, we posted one uh, yesterday uh, on the show uh, about the, um, uh, the, uh, the British pound versus the um, uh, U.S. Uh, versus the U.S. dollar. And uh, we, we made that uh, exact uh, 1.27 uh, expansion uh, last night. Uh, we hit it to the exact tick uh, at 149.64, and we've had a uh, you know a little bit of a rally. We rallied almost 100 pips, uh, which isn't much for you know a currency, but that's still a, a good start. And we will uh, be watching uh, you know this one you know very very closely. The euro is also close to that uh, you know 786 retracement down at that 129. Uh, 80 level that we looked at uh, yesterday also, and that's had a pretty good move uh, of 100 pips. But folks, 100 pips in the currency markets, even though it's uh, you know more than a thousand dollars, that is not necessarily a lot of money. Uh, I mean, because those those currencies are thousands of times bigger than the stocks and bond markets. I mean, these are trillions of dollars being moved, not billions, trillions of dollars being moved uh, every day. So that's why the difference. You know, can be uh, you know a huge amount, and uh, you have to keep that you know into uh, into perspective. I wanted to show uh, a longer term chart on the uh, British pound because it's been under a lot of pressure because of the fact that uh, they've had these uh, uh, rules over in England about how much money they can uh, spend while they're while they're doing all their uh, little uh, shenanigans that they do, uh, just like we do here, of course, but. Um, it has a lot of, uh, this is going to be a weekly chart, and you're going to see some really nice uh, uh, ABCD patterns on this. And uh, we've hit a major uh, major support point today, but frankly, with uh, the, the weakness that we've had in the pound, uh, any good rally that we would get, and I, I, I would think a rally of three to 500 points uh, in, the, uh, in the British pound would be a really good rally. Uh, you know, should probably be ready to be sold. So that's uh, that's what we uh, that we look at. We're over. Uh, well, we've been over these these important points for uh, several weeks now, and uh, you know, I am uh, of the opinion that we are at a massive top in the stock market. Um, and uh, you know, if we're up strong next week, then you know, I'm certainly going to be wrong one more time. But these patterns in the Nasdaq and the patterns in the New York Stock Exchange Index. And also the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500. These are the same type of patterns that we were forming back in 2007 in October. I, I featured that in the show on Wednesday. I don't want to repeat that because this is a, a commodity show, and I want to spend uh, a lot more time, you know, on the commodities because of the fact that this is what it is. It's a commodity show. Um, I would like to uh, take a second here and take a look at crude oil because we've had a uh, a big move in crude oil coming off of, uh, of a 61% retracement uh, on the daily pattern. 
And um, what we've done now is uh, just really sort of verified, you know, where we are. It'll just take me a second to to get the uh, uh, to get it all lined up because I'm on a different. Oh dear, one second here. This is the bad part of this. Um, we have made a perfect um, perfect retracement here uh, on the British. Or excuse me, on the uh, uh, crude oil. And we stopped exactly at the 61% retracement of the low that we made in November. That came in at just under $90 a barrel. Uh, the low came in at around 90, uh, excuse me, 80.64 a barrel, and it's rallied $2 a barrel uh, since that point. Now, as long as it holds above that, that makes it, you know, a valid pattern, and it's it's similar to a, a normal bull market where you go up and pull down to 61% and then start up again. So this is a you know, a spot we, we were looking at it for a long time as our, our first profit objective. Uh, you know, it completed the Gartley up there at that uh, 9750, 9800 area, uh, the Gartley sell signal, and now this is the first objective. And if you were to draw a trend line from last June through November and all the way where we are now, and it's almost a perfect trend line. As a matter of fact, I'll just do that and show you folks. Uh, I'll just put that into uh, Tiger TV, and you can see, uh, the long-term trend line that has uh, happened in crude oil, and it stopped uh, just just a few days ago on Monday when we were doing the show uh, at that particular point. So crude oil has, uh, you know, made a what we think is a significant bottom. We think that gold and silver have made significant bottoms. Um, you know, copper has had a little bit of a rally, a couple cents, you know, off the bottom, but really, really not too much. So you know, well, interesting, you know, to see. You know what's going to happen. Uh, you know with that one as we uh, as we go through um, the trade. Now I wanted to take a little bit of um, uh, some work that was done by our esteemed leader, uh, one of our leaders, our co-leaders, and that is uh, Basil Chapman. And uh, Basil uh, brought up the point about the uh, muni bond market, and uh, I want to show the chart on muni bonds because this is an incredibly bearish chart, folks. Um, the market, you know, made a high in November, came down in December, rallied to the 61% retracement, and has since had two lower highs. And, and what happens today is it gaps down. That is not a good sign. And if we can, you know, if these, uh, if uh, the June bonds close below 141.15, uh, I really believe that these things are going to be breaking down, you know, big time. Maybe that's the thing that makes the stock market you know, explode higher, and everybody wants to, uh, you know, be involved in the stock market, and the three-drive pattern and all these other patterns are going to fail this time, which, you know, they can fail, but, uh, you know, that, that's the way it goes. But uh, if the bonds go below, those, we're going to cover the bonds at, at length before, oh, we got to take a break here, 877-927-6648. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. 
Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Great Panther Silver. For more information, just click the Great Panther Silver banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back, folks, and we've got our friend from British Columbia. Rick, are you there? How are you doing today? I am good. We've got 80 degrees today, but we got a big winter storm coming in from California. Going to drop our temperatures about 30 degrees and bring some snow tomorrow. But that's now the way you are, What can you, I do for you, my friend? And you are where, Arizona? Tucson, Arizona. That's correct. Hey, let's take a look at that silver contract on a weekly. Uh, on a weekly basis. Hold on. I will pull it up here. And if it's hopefully, uh, yeah, it looks pretty much like the other one. Yeah, just give me one second, and I will, uh, I think it's if, all if ready it, to go. It, yeah, it's if, got, boy, what major 618 retracements this thing has had all along. Holy cow. Well, I'm just curious. Like, I I still think we got to test that that low of uh, what is it? Uh, late June of well, twenty six and a half. Yeah, yeah. There's a possibility that we could do that, but we've we've completed such perfect patterns here, Rick. At the at the seven eight six, uh, you know, and we haven't rallied much. You know, that's the good thing that you well, have in your favor. So, at, yeah, we were extremely oversold. Mm -hmm. on no the question. Stocks, especially, right? I mean. Yeah. Uh, like maybe as bad as we've been for a long time, but I was just curious. Like, um, like uh, I I see volume there on a charting service that I have mm -hmm. down there, and I don't know if you get the volumes or not. But it looks to me like we could rally now with the euro to about one thirty three, which is that highest. I see it as the highest volume day um, in the last six months. You know that that huge volume day that we had there, I don't know if it was the 24th or 5th, somewhere in that yeah. area. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm thinking we might just go to the top of that. Well, I'll tell you what I do is I do not look at the euro and silver. I look at silver for silver and euro for euro. Every time I try to interchange these things, the market seems to, uh, you know, have a little paddle there to teach me a lesson. So I look at silver as, so. in fact, I hardly trade silver. I trade it maybe twice 
three times a year. I, I trade gold all the time. I'm in the gold market daily. But uh, the uh, well, the, the the charts do correlate themselves. Oh, I am. I'm sure that they do. I'm sure that like, they do. Uh, but I trade the euro every day, and I trade the uh, you know gold every day, and so that's the that's all I use. Well, and it's that, much easier what, for me. Are you are you thinking then? Since you maybe trade the euro every day, are you thinking we rally back into that high spike day of one thirty three? Rick, if I told you the truth, you probably won't be my friend anymore, but I'll tell you the truth, okay? Maybe we can still be friends. I really don't think about what's going to happen. All I look at is uh, what's my profit potential on the, the pattern that I'm looking at. I don't look at the news uh, at all. I mean, absolutely nothing. I mean, I just literally have I've trained myself. Uh, you know, the first thing I do is I turn on Bloomberg in the morning just to make sure the world is still there. And there's been no assassinations, and we're not at war with anybody. That's the first thing I do. Then I turn it to mute, or to, uh, to country and western music, or you know something. But I, I don't. I just will not listen to the news. I, I'm I'm a pure technician. I just want to see what the bars are doing. If they're going up, there's more buying. If there's going down, there's more selling. That, that and that's really all that I do. And anybody that knows me you know, very well at all, knows that this is this is the truth. I don't read a magazine. I I haven't seen a Wall Street Journal in years. The last time I saw one was in the bottom of Jim Twentyman's cage that he had for his parrot. So that's the last time I saw one. No, I just thought maybe you had a bit of a target on the euro, that's all. Um, oh, I, we, we've hit a nice target on the bottom, that 129.80. We talked about that uh, coming in Monday and also, you know, on uh, Wednesday. And the way that it came out of here today, you know, over 100 pips, in a matter of a short period of time, tells us that that's it. And also the U.S. dollar index was within uh, 15 or 20 points at that 83 level of making a major head and shoulders pattern. So you're absolutely correct looking at that, but I'm looking at each one separately, not trying to evaluate saying this is what's happening with the dollar right. now, what's happening with silver. I, I'm not able to do that. You know, I, I just, uh, it's too much. I, I have a rough time walking and chewing gum at the same time, so that's all I'm trying yeah, to do well, is keep it simple. That... Yeah, it's just for uh, uh, June, February. That 133 was support, mm -hmm. um, kind of, and uh, it's a neckline, kind of, almost. And um, and then that high volume day spiked up and then reversed down. And so I see huge resistance at 133, and I was just curious if if you think there's a chance we go there, that's all. Oh, this, that's easy. I mean, if you can go from, you know, from if you can make 120 pips in a matter of a couple hours, you can make another hundred and some pips in a matter of a couple hours very easily. Exactly. So, exactly. you know, that's all I'm saying. You can do it very simply. You had a big move coming out of there. And not only that, it, it hasn't backed off very much. I mean, it's just been, you know, going sideways for well over two hours after making that big run, which means they've got somebody in there on the wrong side of the market. In other words, they're short and they're trying to get out and they're not able to. we well, got to take a little hey, break we here. Went, we can you went, stay out we... for just a little bit longer? Yeah, you can. Okay. Just recently, on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF, and over the same two trading days, Market Insight subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. 
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position at Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar, bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Excuse me, folks. I want to po apologize to Rick in British Columbia for uh, knocking him off the line because we have Rich as a guest, and um, his time is very valuable because I know the tea times coming up in Minnesota with the snow at six feet are going to be a little limited today. Rich, are you there? You bet. It's a lot <laughs> different than last week in Naples, I can tell you that. I, I can imagine. How much snow do you have today? Well, it, 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 we had 10 inches on Monday, and it's, you know, there's, Probably two, three feet on the ground, you know. Oh dear! It's been rain. It's been doing snows every, you know, four or five days. We've, we're still behind on moisture, but it's a start. Let's talk about the grain markets, Rich. You know, we're coming into the planting season, and last year you were alerting us to the fact that we could possibly have, you know, a drought. And uh, I'd like to get your feeling on if there's a possibility that where we could have back-to-back -back bad years, like you know, last year would be drought, maybe this year could be too much uh, too much rain or bad weather at planting season what, what's your what's your take on what you're hearing well the, the the you know I'm not a meteorologist but the guys I talk to that are meteorologists talk about the jet stream and, and how it's still a good deal south and they believe that that's the key thing that and that's also the, uh, the the things that make a drought situation correct right Right, so the, yeah. the moisture just goes south and misses some of the corn belt. The reason there's been so much pressure on the on the wheat market recently, and well, and then somewhat on the corn here in the last couple of days, is that the moisture into the winter wheat belt has really been helpful, 
and it's going to bring about a pretty decent crop. If you look at uh, wheat's probably lost 60 cents to corn in the last three, four weeks. In fact, it's, it's dropped so much that Japan the other day bought a cargo of, of, of wheat to use as feed. Oh, and my gosh. When wheat is cheap enough versus yeah. corn, you know, you'll feed it. Now, the way it works is if I've got a pen of cattle in Texas and I'm feeding them corn, I'm not going to switch to wheat because that would knock the cattle off the feed for two weeks. But if I put a new pen of cattle in, I may very well start to feed wheat. So the, uh, UD, the USDA comes out with their WASDE report tomorrow, which is basically about supply and demand. The big report's on March 28th. What is that report called again, please? The, the WASDE report. And okay. They're basically, we, we think that uh, ethanol production has been slow, so we, we expect them to take a little bit of uh, uh, usage off the ethanol. We expect them to probably take a little bit of usage off uh, uh, the feed in, for corn because now wheat's getting cheap, you know, in the substitution effect. Um, but the big report's on the 28th. The bottom line in the grains is they always come to life once the farmer starts to put the money in the, in the ground. Now, as I drove back from Florida uh, over the weekend, the rivers are still relatively low. Um, we've got moisture, but it's, it's going to take a whole bunch of moisture to, to get us back to normal. You hardly, <clears throat> when I've looked back at droughts, we seem to have not a one-year event, but there's usually a two-year event within, you know, it may not be this year, but if it's not this year, it's next year. W within the next two years, one of those years is, is usually trouble. And, and, of course, the key thing is where is the trouble? Yeah. The Rich, do you remember in 1988 you had been out to visit me in Pismo Beach for a week, and I was yep. taking you back to the L.A. airport, and we were driving by Lake Kachuma, you yep. know, where Michael Jackson's home was, yep. and the lake was down about, oh, 30 or 40 feet, and you, you commented, you said, next year this thing will be overflowing. And, uh, and you were right, 88 was the drought year, and then 89 they had some of the wettest weather, California had ever seen, and that that lake did overflow. I never would, I never did forget that, you know. So it's amazing yeah. how that nature can, you know, revert yeah. to the mean, come back and adjust itself. Yeah, it sure does. It, it it does it repeatedly, and that's why these patterns that we look at, you know, look pretty good. Now, I wanted to, uh, you know, I'm really trying to, you know, get by, a handle by, by on this way, corn. I you did a great job on your bean videos this morning. Well, thank you. But, you know, what I want to do, Rich, and with your help again this year, I'd like to be able to follow this corn market because they have that ETF for corn. Right. And, uh, you know, that's uh, easily traded by the folks that, uh, you know, uh, in the public. I mean, a lot of people don't trade commodities, and so they can trade the ETF, and it tracks uh, very closely to what the corn market does. So we want to watch that closely. So I would think um, last year uh, we were in the last week of May, when the, the first uh, signs of the drought would come in. Do you think that that could be the same, uh, you know, scenario that we're looking at uh, this year that could be the, you know, right around Memorial Day? I, I would expect it to be something like that. I mean, the, the crop report on the 28th will, will have another acreage number. And keep an, keep an eye on cotton in the, in the southwest or, or southeast in the Delta area. You know, a year ago, they had already gotten their stuff planted. And then, of course, naturally, if you've got to plant it already, you can harvest early. This year, their, their planting is way behind last year, and so you won't have as much early corn as you had a year ago. Um, but, yeah, I think the, the, the market tells you, uh, you know, the price of March corn versus the price of, of May corn. That's, that's telling you there's a real demand there for corn and, and, the, and a pretty big demand still for beans. Now, oh, yes, the I, bears I was... would tell you that there's all kinds of beans in South America. But we've got 157 ships or something like that waiting to, to come into port to, to load soybeans. And you know how much it costs to have a ship popping out there in the ocean waiting to be loaded in a 50-plus day wait? It's, yeah. That makes not, a very yeah. expensive, you know, South American soybean if you that's have to sure. and, that and ship I, there, I would... you know, for 40, 50 days doing nothing. Okay. Do you do you see anything in the in the cattle market that that uh, that excites you? Well, actually, um, I think we bottomed hogs yesterday. I think that uh, the cattle now have value, but you know the administration put a lot of their credibility into the idea that if we had sequestered, there would be pain, mm -hmm. and that the TSA lines would be two and three hours extra long. 
and one of the and they can they can by how they decide to furlough and manage their these cuts, they can create pain if they want to. The way they oh. can do it in the cattle is by furloughing a bunch of meat inspectors, <clears throat> and that's what's got everybody nervous. If it wasn't for that, you know, the cattle market would be showing some life already, but. There's there's still that threat that uh, the administration could decide. Well, we're just going to furlough ten or fifteen percent of our our um, meat inspectors, and then all the packing plants have to slow down the chain that uh, that the hooks that you know they the car- I don't know if you've ever been a packing plant, but they the carcass is on a hook, and that chain is you know goes through the plant, and they they um, you know cut the the animal up into the different cuts of meat, and you know. Then it has to go by the inspector, and if the you know if you take off ten or fifteen percent of the inspectors, they have no choice but to slow their their uh, kill rates down. And that and means that's, it's that's, cost that's us the more problem the <laughs> that, that's got everybody worried. Yeah. We should be higher, <clears throat> but nobody's willing to step in front of this thing until they have a better idea how have, uh, they're going to. Have you heard that. of any um, delays at the airports <laughs> because of uh, cutbacks on the TSAs? No, yeah. no. I haven't I mean, heard it, any either. The, 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 the uh, cuts that we're making as a percent of the total budget is inconsequential. It, it you know, it it shouldn't really affect service in anything if they want to ma- manage it properly. But if they decide they want to manage it to uh, create maximum pain, that's a different story. And that's what the cattle traders are, are concerned about. But I think the, the hogs are, are finally... Uh, uh, Put in, like I said, they put in the bottom yesterday. They're going to have some life. Uh, cattle, if it weren't for the sequester concern about the meat inspectors, would probably be dollars higher right now. What about this revenue protection insurance that uh, some of these people have? Does that have any effect on some of this? Well, that's the, that's what allows you to um, plant your your crop without any you know, any risk. Mm-hmm. I mean, basically, when I was growing up in South Dakota, we'd plant our crop, and, you know, sometimes you get wiped out. Nowadays, you have insurance, and that insurance not only covers the uh, the, the crop yield, but it's uh, also fixed in the price. So it builds in a profit, too, for you. And it builds in a small profit, depending on, on what your situation is. But the, the nice thing about it is that, that that allows these people to plant, you know, fence row to fence row, because they know they've got they've got a minimum government guarantee. It, indirectly, it's a it's not actually government guarantee, but indirectly, the government sub- subsidizes part of the in, insurance premium that the farmers pay. Yeah. You know, Rich, <laughs> when we when we were doing this summit 40 years ago, there was not that much stuff to think about. But now, that with all this legislation and all the things that have happened. Well, there are so many things that could throw a wrench in everything. It's just truly amazing, isn't it? It, it really is. So you you yeah. really have to take a global view and a macro view. Yeah. And for for your average person, the futures market, because of the leverage, is not the place to be. It's not because of the volatility. The volatility compared to stocks is is very minor. Yes. But the leverage is is what most people don't know how to manage and how you know. One of the rules you had on your wall at the time. He who knows not what he risks, risks all. That's still there, Rich. <laughs> and and uh, Mark yeah. Douglas will tell you that you know you have to learn to trust yourself because in the futures with margin and leverage, you have the unlimited ability to destroy yourself. Yep, that's for sure. That's why you, protection is the main thing that you have to be thinking about. Yeah, at and all that's time. what you've You're been teaching defense. all these years to people. Yeah, for sure. But your average person doesn't, you know, it doesn't know this. It's like it's like giving a uh, a gun to a, a little kid. Yeah. Well, is, is, can, you don't come break, into the you don't dangerous. come into the TFNN uh, you know uh, room and, uh, and and the unit very much, but but it's one thing that they preach here at TFNN is uh, you know the the overall handling of risk. You know that it's not how much money you're going to make; it's how much money you could potentially lose. You know, and that's the whole key. You know, to everything that uh, that we do, and uh, that's the real beauty of what TFNN does for the folks. Is it? Not only gives them some ideas on trades and stuff, but it tells them, you know, look, this is where a spot where you're going to be wrong, and you know, just move on, you know, to the next trade, and you know, that's that's the bottom line. Yep, that's for sure. Listen, thanks for coming on, and we're going to have you on a little more often as we come into the planning season, 
and uh, because we really want to be looking at this corn move like we did, uh, you know, last year, because that was a you know tremendous uh, you know dollar and a half move in a, in a matter of a few weeks for us, and I'm sure that uh, we could have one another another one of those this year. It would really be nice, and boy, the charts are are certainly uh, setting up to uh, you know look like that's uh, you know what they want to do. So thanks again for for sharing what you know, Rich. We really appreciate it. I enjoyed it. Yeah, give care. Lisa, give Lisa and the family my regards. All righty, thank you. Uh, okay, okay, folks, uh, we're going to take a look now at. Uh, I wanted to, to uh, go into soybeans a little bit. I posted the corn chart uh, that we were looking at, um, and also um, I wanted. To, I have to do this soybean because I spent a lot of time getting it ready, and I wanted to show you the difference on on why the soybeans are 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 so uh, are so different. The first one I'm going to to put up. Is the long-term uh, daily going back uh, into the drought and, and the big ABCD pattern at the top and the fact that we pulled down to the 61% retracement. But the one that's in Tiger TV now are May beans. Those are old crop soybeans. Those are the beans that Rich was talking about that the boats are waiting on. They want to put those beans in the boats and send them to China, Argentina, uh, Japan, wherever they're going because they've been sold. Now they're just waiting to be you know, waiting to be shipped. So these are already out of the ground in the bins. Uh, you know, they've been sold by farmers. They're probably owned by the processors now. And so that's what, uh, that's what, and if you look at that, you'll see that it's trading at 1470 a bushel. And there's 5,000 bushels, you know, in a contract. So that makes, you know, the value of the contract $65,000. And it only costs about $2,500, you know, to trade uh, soybeans on margin. So you got about 25 to 1 you know, margin with that, and that makes it, uh, you know, really, uh, really quite uh, uh, dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. And that's why you always want to use a 10 or 15 cent stop, you know, when you're when you're trading, uh, you know, the soybeans. Now, the next chart that I'm going to put into Tiger TV is the chart of the uh, November soybeans. These are the ones that are not even planted yet. The farmers are still thinking about how much they're going to plant. And if you look at the price of those, those are trading at 1270. Now, back when I was, uh, you know, and Rich and I were, you know, doing this way back in the, the early 60s, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the beans always traded between four and six dollars. Very seldom did they get above uh, seven dollars. In fact, the old, the old adage was beans in the teens, which happened in uh, 1972 during the Russian grain robbery. Uh, November beans hit 12.90 a bushel, and then they went all the way back to four dollars a bushel. And, and once they went above uh, 12.90 a bushel uh, several years ago, about five years ago, that was acting like a bottom and not a top. It just went through it like melted butter, and they went all the way up to, you know, 17 dollars a bushel. But now what we've had is, you know, we're watching two contracts. We're watching the new crop beans, which are these November beans. And then we're watching the old crop beans, and there's a two dollar difference, and that's ten thousand dollars. In other words, a person that buys five thousand bushels of beans now has to pay a ten thousand dollar premium, in, unless he would wait until November. But waiting till November, if there's a drought, these beans could be at seventeen dollars, and then he's going to have to pay fifty thousand dollars for it. So he has to be able to understand how to hedge his position and how to enter the market, you know, and, 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 act, and use these markets. To his uh, to his advantage. So if a person knows that, he, oh, we've got to take a little break here, and then we'll we'll finish up here. I want to finish up with gold. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. 
Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rose, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back, folks. And I posted a chart, a 15-minute chart going back a week in gold, just showing the support that uh, we were talking about yesterday around that 1570 uh, to 1565 level. Uh, so far, that is hit. Uh, and again, you know, we've we've retested it again today. Uh, it has $10 moves, you know, all the time. So it's a really good trading vehicle. Remember, uh, it, that's a hundred and fifty-seven thousand dollar contract, and uh, the margin on that usually runs around six thousand dollars. So you're getting about twenty to one, or about thirty to one leverage, twenty twenty-five to thirty to one leverage on that. So you need to know what you're doing. But an eight dollar stop in corn, excuse me, in the gold is usually pretty good. The important thing to look at here is that if we can hold this 1555 level that we made. We had a really strong rally uh, that went up to 1620, and then we backed off exactly to the 786. That was that 1565 level. And as long as we can hold above that, you know, we still have a, a pretty good chance uh, to have a rally. Remember, we've been in a bear market uh, for the last five months in uh, gold. We topped, uh, you know, in early October up at that 61% retracement at 1795 and now we're coming down into this level. We've got a really important levels to watch uh, for ourselves uh, in the commodities, and uh, the gold at the 1550 uh, level is uh, very, very important. And then also 
uh, in the, the June bonds below uh, half a point from where they are right now. And if they go below 141.15 in the June bonds, uh, that's going to be uh, you know taking out some major support, and that would be equivalent to the notes taking out support at 130. And if you remember, we posted that muni bond chart that um, Basil spent so much time with. In fact, I was really happy to see that because I had, I'd let it slip, and then I was able to pull it up, and I, I didn't realize that it gapped down today. And uh, believe me, uh, muni bonds are a really big part of the market, and if they're starting to weaken up, that's a... Uh, that's, that's another sign that, you know, there's going to be some problems, you know, somewhere, you know, along the line. So this is what we uh, should be focusing on with the commodities uh, right now are the gold and the bonds, uh, of course, because I think those are the, the major ones, uh, and the silver is all part of that. But the commodity markets have been coming down hard for quite a while, and uh, they haven't shown any signs of, uh, you know, bouncing. They've held a little bit here in this area, but, you know, it's just a very small bounce. Now, they really need to get moving. You know, right after the bottom was formed, they went from, you know, 1550 all the way up to um, 1625 It rallied $75 an ounce in, sil in gold in a matter of three days and then gave 75% of that back. Now, uh, that's usually not a very bullish sign, so that's why we're at a uh, really incredible, uh, incredible spot. I hope this is what you were looking for, Bob, because uh, one, of our, uh, one of our faithful listeners was afraid I was going to say something uh, negative about gold or maybe even positive against his position, and I told him it's still 50-50 because it's just my opinion, folks, just like it's Basil's opinion and Steve's opinions and Tom's opinion. You have to take the responsibility for the trades. We're trying to give you some ideas of what we're looking at, but that's the basis of what we're really, uh, you know, looking at here is the fact that we're uh, we're looking at just possibilities of uh you know, what, what patterns can work with. And you can make money at 50-50 because all you have to do is make more money on the 50% you win and then on the 50% you lose. So that's the real beauty. But if you follow the patterns, you know, faithfully, you should get into that 65% category on the win category, and that, that's it. But we got major stuff happening here in gold and also in the silver and also in the Treasury bond market, uh, the Treasury note markets, and even the stock market. I mean, you know, we're... Uh, we're, we're churning up here, and, you know, all the news is new highs, new highs, new highs. And if you go back to look what happened in October of 07, that's it, folks. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude. Have a wonderful weekend, and may God bless you.